Hello everyone, it's The Preacher coming at you today with my third episode of the Answering Atheism series. So this episode is Science and Religion Part 2. If you did not watch the first episode, I recommend you go do it. But to sum up what the first episode talked about is intelligence cannot come from non-intelligence. And we know this because the observation principle, one of the basic principles of science, dictate this because we've never seen intelligence come from non-intelligence, and in thus we have to assume that the laws of the universe has always remained the same, and in thus it can't happen. So this brings up the question of what, what caused the universe to be here? If there was nothing and then there was everything, what happened there? What caused this? And I did show that many of the theories that atheists try to use to prove that the God did not need to be there for that to happen is based almost entirely on theory. There is no evidence of multiple universes, there is no evidence of any of that. And we can see this, you know, day to day because many of the theories that atheists try to use to prove God wrong is not based in evidence, which we'll talk about today. Well, today we specifically talk about biology because one of the biggest things is the origin of life you know what how did we come from well specifically what did we come from did we come from little single-celled organisms you know and at what point in time did that single organism come here so this is a big part because if we if we don't need a god to explain life, then we don't really need a god in the idea of many atheists. So, very first off, let me say this. Going back to the observation principle, that the idea that intelligence can't come from non-intelligence, we can apply this biology. Because amoeba, a single-celled organism, one of the most simplest creatures on the planet, has enough information in it to fill 1,000 encyclopedias, which is quite a bit. So, where did this information come from? Now, by the way, many atheists is going to say, you know, it, chemical reactions, you know, chance and time. But if you look, uh, specifically an uh, experiment done by Miller and Ye, which was later discredited because they used bad science and they, you know, messed up a lot of stuff, that they tried to make a few little bits of life and they couldn't do it and all throughout history we cannot create life from nothing that if we as highly intelligent scientists or they as highly intelligent scientists we as human beings which highly intelligent human beings if we cannot create life out of the chemicals that we claim are here, and specifically, if we can't even create life out of all the other chemicals that we claim weren't in the beginning, how did we, how did that happen? How did non-intelligence create something that we as intelligent creatures can't make? You know, we, do, we don't even know how to go about making these. So that is the first thing, that the origin of life cannot be explained by chemicals and reactions because we can't even explain how to do it. And why do we assume a non-intelligent chance in time can do it? And, and once again, many atheists will say chance in time, you know, just give enough time and chance will just make it happen. But once again, this goes back to the almost God of Gaps fallacy, which is, you know, if science can't explain how it's done, just give it more time, give it more chance, and eventually it will happen. And this is the big argument that atheists use, a very poor argument, because as the God of Gaps fallacy is for Christians, they use the same thing in this, that, you know, just saying that eventually it will happen. So that is a big part of this. And the second argument for biology is irreducible complexity, which is the argument set forward by a man by the name of Michael Behe, 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 I don't know, look it up, who said that there are some things in the body, some things in organisms, that are irreducible complexity, ir irreducible complexity, which means if you take one part away, the entire thing doesn't work. For example, the eye. If you just take one thing away from the eye, the eye just doesn't work anymore. So, he claims that because you cannot build up to it, then it just had to be there at the beginning. So he claims that this is evidence against 
evolution from a smaller organism. But right away, many atheists are going to yell, but wait, there is a challenger to this. The idea of the two-step Mollerian theory, which states that instead of something being complex, that the thing evolved to do something else, and then it just changed feet functions to do this, which would give it the appearance of irreducible complexity, but in fact it would not be complex at all. It would just be a normal process done by evolution. So as I've looked through this, as I've looked through this argument that many atheists claim just prove irreducible, irreducible complexity completely wrong, I find an issue that the Mollerian two-step theory has no evidence for it. That people push it, but there is no scientific evidence for it, there is no em empirical evidence for it, that there is a lack of evidence for this idea that something evolved and then its function changed. And even more than that, we find in many cases that, <clears throat> we find in many cases that Mollerian and two-step theory just can't explain certain things. For example, the eye, like I said, you know, what function did the eye have other than being an eye? You know, how did, what was this purpose, purpose before? That there's many cases of that. But more specifically, one of the biggest arguments against this origin of species without a god would be the reproductive system, or sexually reproducing. As you find many lower organisms, single celled, you know, slightly simple creatures produce reproduce asexually which means that they take themselves and they divide and they don't need a partner to pr produce offspring so <clears throat> the argument goes is if evolution is all about the best genetics being passed on more likely to survive the ones that can produce offspring the best who can move the genetics the best because it's all about how many of a single creature has that genetics then why is so many animals sexually reproducing that it doesn't make sense that asexual reproduction would be by far the best evolutionary standard of reproducing because you would not need a partner for it you would not need anything else you know it would just reproduce <clears throat> there are some arguments against this saying that you know uh, reproducing sexually avoids parasites being able to wipe out entire species but the issue here is evolution does not have intelligence it cannot think to itself yeah this will help this species eventually it works by generation to generation and generation to generation asexual reproduction would be the best and even more so how would multiple animals reproduce at the exact right time exactly correct and have certain systems and organs to reproduce sexually. That would be by far such a huge coincidence that the Mahler and Two-Step Theory can't explain it, and evolutionary scientists and atheists as a whole can't explain it, that there is no argument to how these organs, these systems come around. So moving on from there, I want to spend the rest of the episode talking about science and religion and how that affects each other. Because as I pointed out last episode, science and religion does merge very well. And if anyone didn't get a chance to read the link that I gave in the, the little section down below from the Pew study, which studies religion in multiple cases, they find that out of all the scientists around today, we find that 33% believe in a personal god, and 18% believe in a higher power of some kind. That's 51% of scientists who believe that there is something outside of this, that there is something outside that science does not have an issue with. That, And these aren't just like regular people, these are you know, highly trained scientists who have studied their field and know things that they know science and they know the arguments i'm sure because they went through the college and yet they still believe that there is some higher power that would mean that that there is 49 percent of athe of atheists in science or those who just aren't sure so this lands us in a very 
awkward situation because although people argue that science is held back by religious people and by religion as a whole, we find that it is the religious people who are just as much in science, if not more so, than the atheist. But also, a big argument that I've seen in this is that the 49% of atheists or other is still basically proportionally large compared to the normal population. That there are still more atheists if you are intelligent. So what does this happen? Why are intelligent people more likely to be atheists? So there are many atheists and humanists out there who push that these scientists, that these intelligent people, they have come to the point where they've matured enough that they can just look past religion and realize that it's all stupid and unscientific and illogical and in thus they can do away with all superstition. However, there are more social studies coming up nowadays that I'll leave a link down in the description talking about how many people going through college for science get pushed in this conformity. That the whole idea of science is non-religious. As uh, the link we'll talk about, that the author of the link is a atheist who turned Christian in Harvard studying science. And right away that, that will, you know, surprise a lot of people that you don't hear many people turning Christian in Harvard studying science and or people studying science and turning Christian. But why? As I've shown, there's just as many religious people in science as there are atheists. So why does it shock us that there are religious people in the schools and studying science? Because the whole idea of it is the social norm is if you're studying science, you don't need religion. And once again, the link will talk about this. It talks about a philosopher who went through college and drifted away from Christianity. Because as the person says, that going through college, they felt that they they felt that they was being pushed away from religion, that they did not need religion because the social norm was not to need religion in science. So once again, to say that intelligent people are not religious because they can just see past religion is wrong. Because just as many people are religious, and many of them were pushed away in college because of social norms. That just if you read the many stories that people if they are openly religious you know they risk they risk going against the professors in school they, they risk getting fired in some situations you know I will even leave a link to a book called God and the Astronomer by an agnostic by the name of David Justro and he even opens his book saying that in someone in his field if they write a religious book they're considered over the hill they're considered crazy by his colleagues and he says that even though everything in his book is evidence everything in his book is science he he'll still probably be considered crazy by many people because it is religious so you find this in many cases even in history as i as i point out many great thinkers were religious of some kind even einstein Although he was a pantheist who wanted to believe that the universe was God, he even admitted that the universe had a beginning and it needed an explanation. And he says that the universe having a beginning pointed that atheism was wrong. And even like Isaac Newton, as I said, he, he openly admitted that it was because of religion what he did in science. That he attributed everything he did in science back to the fact that he was religious. Galileo was the same way. That many of these people, not only were they science and religious, they were devoutly religious. That many of these scientists, they will attribute their work in science back to the fact that they were religious. And this is um, the ending idea here, is that if you are atheist, because of science, if you believe that science points that there is no God, you are believing this 100% out of faith and nothing else. As I've shown many of the theories that people try to use to prove God wrong is 100% theoretical, hypothetical, or something else. That there is no evidence against God in science. That if you believe that there is no God because of science, it is because of faith. And it's funny that um, it was Richard Dawson who said it himself, that he said a delusion is believing something 
lacking evidence. And that's exactly what atheism through science is. You know, as I've said, the beginning of the universe is not explained well by any scientist. You know, any atheist cannot explain that. They can't explain how the universe got here. And then there's biology, which I point out is highly complex, and many people can't explain it. That intelligence cannot come from non-intelligence, and we can't explain how these beginning organisms got here. We can't even begin to explain it. Richard Dawkins himself said that biology is the study of <clears throat> of seemingly highly complex organisms. Francis Crick, who is also a devout atheist, co co-discoverer of DNA, wrote in his book, he, he actually warned in his book to constantly remind yourself that the organisms around you are not created. That Francis Crick specifically warned his students that although everything looks created, that everything is so complex and l seems highly designed, constantly remind yourself that that's not happening. So once again, th these people are relying on faith solely because they don't want there to be a god. But once again, that's for the next episode, which will be religion and morality. So um, the preacher signing out. God bless you once again. All my contact is in the links below. I'll leave links to the religious stuff I talked about. But uh, you know, leave a comment if you want to ask something, say something. You know, like, favorite, subscribe. Come back for more. Thanks, guys.